Alright, going to do a video today on the pagan origins of Christmas trees. Because we're getting into that season, that time of year, where people are bringing Christmas trees and where professing Christians are bringing these trees into their home and decorating them. And I'm going to show you that this thing of decorating a tree and bringing it into your home is not Christian, it has no basis in scripture, but it does have basis in paganism. So, let's get right into it. So first, I'm going to go through some scripture verses. Job chapter 14, verse number 4. Who can bring any, or sorry, who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean thing? Not one. You see, you can't take something that is pagan and make it godly. You cannot take something that is is pagan and, and just just has nothing to do with scripture and say, well, it's a Christian tradition. Can't do that. Ecclesiastes chapter one, verse number fifteen: That which is crooked cannot be made straight, and that which is uh, wanting cannot be numbered. You see, you cannot take something that is crooked and make it straight. You cannot take something that is Satan, sat satanic, and make it godly. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse number 2. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the, at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. The Christmas tree is the way of the heathen. So when you have Christians, and I'm not saying all of them, are, I'm not saying every single person who does this is lost and on their way to hell. I'm just saying that when you're doing this, you're learning the way of the heathen. And many Christians, professing Christians who are doing this, are lost. I'm not saying, I'm not saying you have to stop doing this to be saved. Or, or if you don't, if you don't stop doing this, you're on your way to hell or something. I'm not saying that. This is the way of the heathen, and God says, "Learn not the way of the heathen." And I already know the, the excuses people will make. Well, we're not doing it for that reason, or, or we're doing it to celebrate Christ. Doesn't matter. Learn not the way of the heathen. It doesn't matter if you, if you're not doing it because, or if you're not doing it for the same reason the pagans are doing it. I mean, they'll say. I mean, again, people will just say, "Oh, we're not doing it for the same reason they're doing it." Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you want to do. Learn not the way of the heathen. So even if you think you're celebrating Christ that way, you're learning the way of the heathen. So let's get right into it. The pagan origins of the Christmas tree. This is on www.christmastreehistory.net slash pagan. And I have the link in these um, in the uh, my notes. So it says here in my first uh, page of notes, dating back centuries before Christ, Cultures brought evergreen trees, plants, and leaves into their homes upon the arrival of the winter solstice, which occurs in the northern hemisphere between December 21st and December 22nd. Although specific practices were different in each country and culture, the symbolization was generally the same to celebrate the return and the beginning of the, win of the winter's decline. So, this thing of celebrating a holiday in winter, even that in and of itself, is pagan. The winter solstice, it's a pagan holiday. Yule, you know, that stuff. Uh, here's my second part of my notes. The Egyptians regularly, or particularly event, uh, valued evergreens as a symbol of life's victory over death. They brought, uh, or they brought green date palm leaves into their homes around the time of winter solstice. So you see these pagan Egyptians bringing in trees into their homes and using it as celebrating their gods or, or celebrating, you know, life over death and that kind of stuff. So why are you doing it? You know, if you're a Christian out there, why are you doing it? You're doing what the Egyptians are doing, bringing a tree into your home and decorating it. Learn not the way of the heathen. Um, the Romans had, had a public festival called Saturnalia, which lasted one week and the beginning of December 17th, which included a variety of celebrations around the winter solstice. Uh, curiously, the Roman winter solstice was marked on December 25th, in the Julian calendar, these celebrations are thought to have merged with pagan practices of hanging mils or hanging a mistletoe and the burning of the Yule log. Hmm. The mistletoe? Uh, what are you doing with the mistletoe? It's Romanism. It's pagan Romanism. Learn not the way of the heathen. And uh, we're not doing it for that reason. Doesn't matter. Learn not the way of the heathen. You may. You, I mean, just because you're not doing it for that reason, the fact is you're still doing it. You are. You are doing what the heathen do. Uh, the Druid priests in Great Britain also used evergreen plants and mistletoe in pagan ceremonies, and the mistletoe plant was a symbol of the birth of, the, of a god. Celtic Druids and Norsemen in Scandinavia also used mistletoe in a mysterious ceremony just after the winter solstice. Oh, we're not doing it for that reason. It's the way of the heathen. Don't do it. It doesn't matter what, what reason you think you're doing it for. It is the way of the heathen. Uh, in the mid-1500s, Germans... 
began using evergreen trees as a symbol of hope for the coming of spring, this practice was li is likely to have gradually evolved from pagan rituals of, of the past and merged with the celebration of the Christmas or of Christmas le um, leading to the trees, you know, Christian beginnings. You see, the uh, Christmas trees did not even start till the mid 1500s. Even that, I mean. So why, why are you calling it a Christian celebration? Uh, show me a chapter and verse where the apostles and Jesus Christ celebrated Christ's birth by putting up a tree. It did not even begin until the 1500s. So why are you doing it? Oh, we're Bible believing in all matters of faith and practice. Really? Chapter and verse, please. Where's the Christmas trees at? Chapter and verse. So that concludes this video. Um, I, I'm kind of getting... I'm shocked that you see all these professing Christians bringing this, this tree into their home. I mean, completely ignorant of what Jeremiah 10 says, Job 14, Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Uh, it is the way of the heathen. So it, again, I want to keep saying it. I want to I beat it down your throat. It doesn't matter what, what you think you're doing it for. They'll say, oh, we're not doing it for that reason. We're not doing it for the pagan reason. It doesn't matter, okay? Get that through your, stick, your thick skull. It does not matter, okay? You are doing what the heathen do. You are learning the way of the heathen. Learn not the way of the heathen. So, yeah, if you want to celebrate Christ's birth, you don't need a tree, okay? That, that just is completely unnecessary. Uh, you don't need a tree. You don't need, you know, Santa Claus or Satan Claus, as I call them. Whole other video. But just celebrate his birth. You don't have to have... You, you, all you got to do is celebrate his birth. You don't need to have these trees and, and all those mistletoes. It's the way of the heathen. So, anyway, God bless you. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.